David Williams here from the Electronic Engineering Technology Department at Okanagan College and this video is about electrical energy and power. Now for the most part I just want you to be able to use and understand the equation for power which I'm going to give to you right now. Power, electrical power is equal to the voltage across something times the current that's going through that thing. But before we get into the using this equation I want to talk about a little bit about how I think about energy and power in electric circuits. So to start off with, let's look at one volt. What does one volt mean? Well, if we if we break it down into its component units, one volt is equal to one joule per coulomb. But what does this really mean, one joule per coulomb? Well, to understand what one joule per coulomb means, I'm going to give a very brief physics lesson here. Let's say we have a positive charge, some amount of positive charge here, charge located here, and this positive charge is stationary, it, it can't move. So what this positive charge does is it creates an electric field, and this electric field we can represent with these lines of force coming out of this positive charge. Now these lines of force represent how much force is exerted by and, and also the direction of the force that's exerted by this positive charge on any other charges that are in the vicinity or, and by in the vicinity pretty much anywhere anywhere that can feel the force of the, of the electric charge. So if we have another charge in the picture here, a negative charge in this case, the electric field created by this positive, the stationary positive charge, is going to exert a force that we know to be attractive. So uh, this is maybe a little bit unintuitive in in that the negative, the force of the neg on the negative charge is in the opposite direction to the to the arrows of this electric field. But that's just the convention. The negative charge is going to move in the opposite direction of any electric field lines of force any force applied over a distance represents work done so this electric field from this positive charge can do work on this negative charge and voltage is a measurement of how much work that electric field does per unit of charge so let's say that this negative charge there's actually one coulomb of negative charge here and currently it's right here at point A and let's say this was this charge here was free to move so what's going to happen is it's going to move in this direction and let's say that it gets up here after some time to point B and if the amount of work that's done by the electric field on the charge is is equal to one joule to move it from move that charge from point A to point B we've done one joule of work on one coulomb of charge one joule on one coulomb is the same as one volt. So that volt is a representation of how much energy it took to move the charge from this point to this point. And that work that was done to that the work that was done on the charge was done by this electric field. Alternatively, if we have if that charge, that negative charge is at point B and we apply an external force to this charge to move it in that direction, and we move it back to point A, move it back up here to point A, it's the, same, it's the same one coulomb of charge, it's going to take one joule of external energy to move the charge from point B back up to point A. But that still represents one joule of energy applied to one coulomb of charge to move it. It's still going to, to equal one volt or one one joule per coulomb but in this case it's an external energy to move it against the way that the electric field is trying is trying to move it and in the first case it was the electric field doing work on the charge so how do these concepts apply to an electric circuit let's say we have a battery here and it's a 9 volt battery 
So what a, what a 9 volt battery is going to do is it's going to perform chemical work on charges to separate the charges. So it's external work to separate charges. 9 joules of energy is going to be imparted onto every coulomb of charge in this battery. Now those electrons are just going to be sitting there, separated, um, or moved uh, moved away, or moved against, or with the, with the electric field. Now, if we were to complete the circuit here, so now the electrons are free to move with the with the electric field. So electrons are going to move through this circuit, and they're going to want to move from this higher energy position into a lower energy position on the other side of the battery and and they are going to do that by moving through this resistor and as they do as they move through this resistor the electric field is doing work and converting energy from the form from the electric form into in the case of a resistor into heat and we can figure out what the rate of work is in other words we can figure out what the power is by starting with this idea that there's going to be nine joules of work done for every coulomb of charge. But now we want to figure out how quickly the coulombs are being moved through this resistor. So what's that measurement of the, the rate of coulomb move, movement? Well, it's, it's current. So what we'll have to do is put a, we'll assume a resistance of a thousand ohms on that resistor. So from Ohm's law, current is going to be equal to the voltage, 9 volts over 1,000 ohms. So we have 0 0.009 amps, or in other words, that's 0 0.009 coulombs per second of charge that's moving through this resistor. And if for every coulomb of charge moving through that resistor, it's going to release 9 joules of energy and we have this 0 0.009 coulombs of charge passing through every second, we are going to get 0 0.081 joules of energy converted from electrical form into a heat into heat form every second. And the units of joules per second are the units of power, which are watts. So in this system, 0 0.081 watts of power is going to be output from this resistor. In, in other words, that's, that's the energy being converted from electrical form into heat form. Now, on the other side of the circuit, we're going to have the exact same amount of current coming out of the battery and then back into the battery on this side as is going through the resistor. So we will have 0 0.081 watts of electrical energy or sorry, electrical power being generated by this battery. And generated meaning that is being converted from the chemical form into an electrical form. So the power source is going to be equal to the power load. Now here's a quick little example. Let's say you have a phone here and you need to recharge the phone. So you're going to plug it, in, plug it into the wall outlet or not a wall outlet, well, I guess through a wall outlet if you've got a, a little adapter here. And we want to know how much power this thing is consuming as it's being recharged. So we're going, going to need to do two things. Number one, put an ammeter in there. And number two, put a voltmeter to measure between the positive lead and the, the negative lead here. So we're measuring the voltage that's being applied to the iPhone and we're measuring the current that's being input into the iPhone. Or the current going through the iPhone, I guess. We know power is voltage times current. So let's say our measurement here was, well our measurement here is 5 volts and the current measurement here is 0.2 amps. So the power consumption of this phone as it's being recharged is going to be 5 volts times 0 0.2 amps, which is equal to 1 watt. Now let's say this was a constant. It's probably not going to be constant, but let's say it, let's say it was constant for, for the entire recharging time, and let's say it took 
two hours to recharge. Well, now we can actually figure out how much energy was being put back into the battery of this phone. Because if you have constant power, energy is going to be power times time. And I, we just calculated that it's two watts, and I said it was going to be recharged for two hours. So that's equal to four watt hours of energy being put into this phone. Um, not standard units, or not the SI units, so if we wanted to know how many joules of energy were being put into the phone, well, it's still going to be power times time. So two watts or two joules per second. We are going to need to convert our hours into second. Two hours times 3,600 seconds per hour. Gives me 14,400 joules of energy being put, put into the battery of this phone. One final example here. Let's take a look at a circuit. Simple little light emitting diode circuit. Let's say this is a 5 volt source. This is an LED. It's a red LED. A red light emitting diode. And this is a 220 ohm current limiting resistor. And I go and I measure the voltage across the LED. And I get a measurement of 1.87 volts. And I measure the voltage across the resistor. And I get 3.13 volts. And this is as I expected because I have a 5 volt source. The voltage across the LED plus the voltage across the resistor should add up to the 5 volts from the source. From Ohm's law, I can figure out what the current in the circuit is. 3.13 volts across the re resistor divided by 220 ohms. The resistance of the resistor, that's going to give me 14.2 milliamps of current in the circuit. Everything is connected in series, so each, each element in the circuit is going to have the same amount of current. Power dissipated or used by the LED, converted by the LED. For a light emitting diode, it's going to convert electrical energy into light energy at a fair, fairly efficiently. And the amount of power is going to be the 1.87 volts across it times the 0 0.0142 amps through it. And that LED is going to be outputting 26.6 milliwatts. And that's all going to be in the form of light, mostly in the form of light. Power dissipated by the resistor would be the 3.13 volts across it times the 0 0.0142 amps through it. Gives me 44.4 milliwatts. And that's going to be pretty much all in the form of heat. Finally, the power from the source. Well, I'm just going to use the same voltage times current law. Well, I've got four, five volts from the source. It's outputting 0 0.0142 amps. So it is outputting 0 0.071 watts. So the source, obviously the source of the power, the LED and the resistor are using up the power, or converting it anyway. And you can see 26.6 .6 milliwatts electricity to light, 44.4 milliwatts electricity to heat, that adds up to the 71 milliwatts that is coming from the 5 volt source. One last point. We've seen a few examples of power being equal to voltage times current. But we should also know Ohm's law is, is voltage is equal to current times resistance. So if you're talking about a resistor, you can write the power in terms of voltage and resistance and power in terms of current and resistance by substituting V equals IR into the equation and alternatively by substituting I equals V over R 
into into this equation. So two more two other forms of of calculating power if you're dealing with a resistor, power is I squared R. Power is also equal to V squared over R. So if I just have a resistor here, and I know it's a 100 ohm resistor, and that 2 amps of current is going through it, power is going to equal, be equal to 2 squared times 100, 400 watts. Similarly, if I have a resistor, let's say it's a 10 ohm resistor this time, and I can measure the voltage across it, and that voltage is I get 4 volts across it, well the power dissipated by this resistor is going to be 4 volts squared divided by 10 ohms. It's going to work out to 1.6 watts. So I hope you learned a little bit about electrical energy and power and I'll see you in the next video.